Today we're going to do a time-lapse watercolor of the famous painting Madame X by John Singer Sargent. I suspected some things about this painting and I'll reveal that soon. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. So, uh, I have been recapping Portrait Artist of the Year, but of course I'm really an artist in my own studio. Here's a picture of Madame X. Now, of course, the pa real painting is of her whole body. Now, many of us are captivated by this image. When I first saw it, I was as well. First of all, it's an enormous painting. <laughs> and I really suspected that it was a painting with only two values in it, just one light and just one dark. But I didn't know that for sure without making my own. So on the left, I have some columns. I have a dark column, a medium column, and a light column. I'm not going to put anything in the light column at all because I really think that what is happening in this painting, and it turned out to be true from this exercise, was that it is indeed a two-value painting. So when you have a two-value painting, I have to ask myself, well, how are you going to turn a form? How are you going to make something appear not to be completely flat if you only have two values? How in the world are you going to do that? And he answered the question for me, and his answer was temperature. You ha can only control form. If you can't have control over your value range, then you have to have control over the temperature. And temperature means how warm or how cool a color is. So the skin is packed full of color. The overall value of the skin for the most part is, is light or, or white, but there's so much color in there. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to mix a lot of neutrals. And I'm gonna have to mix a lot of neutrals that have that lean toward warm or lean toward cool. So when leaning toward warm, then I'm going to go toward my blues and toward my violets. And did I say that right? Leaning toward my cools, I'm going to go violet and blue or green. And on my warms, I'm going to go toward the fire sign of the color wheel, reds, oranges, yellows. But everything is still within a neutral range. So the challenge is I've got to remember, I've got to stay in a certain value range and meaning all the colors have to be almost approximately the same value, but the only thing I can change is temperature, meaning how warm or cool something is. And so that means a tremendous amount of mixing on my palette and test dabs. You'll see it on the left where my, my mediums, the whole painting is basically mediums, although on any other painting, it, they would have been called lights. But I needed to figure all that out. And I'm using a big brush here because I don't, because I, I prefer a big brush. It's an eight by eight inch uh, piece of paper. And it is, um, and, my, and the brush I tend to use most of the time is a number 12 flat. So, being a watercolor painter, I always say keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. Now the whites of the paper means if you lose those whites of your paper, you cannot get them back. You cannot get them back. And it was around here I realized, uh-oh, I lost my whites. I don't have any whites anymore. And I thought, now you have a problem. If you have no whites anymore, then you've got to adjust everything to be slightly darker than your lightest area which was um, a moment when I had to get up, walk away, and <laughs> consider my life choices <laughs> because, because my inner child was saying, but that's hard, I don't know if I can do it. But that's part of the fun. I, I, the best thing I like to do is sit down at the easel and be absolutely convinced that I can't do something and then to be surprised and find out that I can. But one of the ways that I achieved that, I have to admit, is a little bit of what might be called cheating. And what happened at the very, very end is I did go into a tube of gouache. Now, gouache is not a see-through uh, pigment like watercolor is. Um, so I picked up a little tube of gouache that I have just to restore one or two lighter places. I couldn't get back to white. And I mean one or two places, really, literally, only one or two places. You can't even see where they are. But I needed them. Personally, I needed them. So this was a really good learning exercise for me. It is indeed a two-value painting. 
And once again, and reinforced to me what an incredible master of observation uh, John Singer Sargent is. I'm so glad that I got this opportunity, and I'm, and I'm glad I could share it with you. I am finding that painting, uh, paintings of paintings, that's a funny sentence, painting paintings of paintings, is really teaching me a lot. Um, I think it's teaching me a lot about painting, and I think it's teaching me almost to be a little bit um, kind of like them, inhabiting their skin for a few seconds, which is very enjoyable. I don't know if it'll be enjoyable if I try to do someone like Van Gogh. I suspect that might be torturous. Yeah, that'll be torturous, but we'll see whether I do that or not. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, and mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.